Ooh, I don't know if it's on Be Right Back. It should have been on starting soon. Never mind. Doesn't really matter. Afternoon guys. Evening even. Guys and girls. Who've we got? Andy Magic Knight. I'm up. Shalan. Oh that's me. <laughs> Deps. Sanction. Dr. Miz. Hi guys. Hope you can hear me well. Right. So tonight we're going to do Bubble Bobble. I've done a little bit of work. Um, just to make a clean version of it tonight. I'll explain what I did actually. So I took I took a version from CSDB. Can't actually remember which version it was. Um, got into the game, and then once I was in the game, I saved the memory out into two portions: the memory from uh, 0 hundred to zero eight FF. And then the memory from 0900 onwards. And then I'm using this file to load the, the big portion, the high memory 0900 onwards into the correct place. And then the other memory underneath IO RAM. My beard looks amazing. It's getting a bit out of hand to be honest. He's trimming. So it's a little bit too much. Will be sorted out pretty soon I'm sure. Um, yeah, and then I've just written a, a little program which banks out the IO RAM um, and then jumps to this routine which then copies it all back to the beginning. And I drop the tunes, no problem. Here we go. Yeah, Bomb Jack DX, I saw that, it's looking really good actually. I'm excited to play that because I really do enjoy the Bomb Jack games. No wine tonight, just Sprite. Sprite Zero as well. No fun. Here's Hayes. Welcome, guys. Thanks for the raid, Hayes. And welcome, everyone that's come along with Hayes. Just explaining um, the, the patch file that I've made to run this. <laughs> Has Hayes been playing that file again? Uh. <laughs> oh no. Hi guys. Uh. I'm never going to live that file down, am I? That video. <laughs> he got to level 60. I saw he was doing quite well actually. So one of the things I did actually um, while I was watching uh, Hayes earlier was have a look to see if I could find where the game over countdown routine was um, which I found as well. Thanks for the host Dom. Uh, I got a boss of move. That's why we've got the Shallon Shimmer remote. That's why that exists. <laughs> Made backups and sell them to a safe location. So you're going to complete it then eventually. I have a new random routine. Um, it's not in this, it's in something else I'm working on at the moment, um, which I can't really tell you what it is unfortunately. Um, but I will implement something similar when we look at um, uh, when we look at the enemy routines in the... Oh you've made backups of the video, <laughs> oh god. Damn it. That uh, scuppers my chances of hacking you and deleting it somehow. Um, yeah, when I, when we do the enemy routine in the, uh, in the game, I'll, we'll, we'll need, probably need some random. So at that point, I'll show you the routine. It's quite simple, really. It's just starting a timer, and just leaving the timer running all the time, um, but with a with a countdown that's a kind of. I picked a prime number because it's just for me it feels like that would probably give the most random values when it restarts uh, and then just reading uh, the lower eight, eight bits of that value um, so as long as you take more than 256 cycles then uh, to read the next uh, a lot, the next random number which is what four lines then the chances are you're going to get a completely different number fairly unpredictable yeah, Twitch takes a long time to approve emotes. It's 
frustrating. Um, yeah, so so basically, I, I took those those two uh, binary kind of memory dumps, imported them like this, importing the one that's in low memory, so the zero page. Um, I heard heard uh, Hayes talking about the, the the kind of protection that they they put on games by moving stuff into zero page, and this kind of gets around that um, by using the the memory under under IO RAM, so where you would have your sprite, your sound, and your color data. Uh, you can copy stuff into there, and if it's not being used already by the game, which isn't in the case of Bubble Bubble, then all you need to do is bank it in at that point and uh, set your interrupt disable, bank it in, and then you can run code in that location and copy it back down to zero page again. Um, so that's what this does. And then the other, th other thing I had to do was find this um, this launch address, which was just a matter of kind of uh, looking for clues as to uh, as to how the game starts up. So um, the way I did that actually was to take the um, the cracked version and as it was unpacking, uh, put some breakpoints in in the loops that it was running to see where it would jump to after the loops. Um, and then I found this address. I tried it on a couple of different versions and, and it works fine. So I'll show you that running now. Hopefully I've got the sound turned off because as, as much as the bubble bobble music is uh, nostalgic. No, I haven't. Uh, as much as the uh, bubble bubble music is nostalgic, I don't want to hear it over and over again. Um, yeah, so there we go. And it seems to be, everything seems to be fine in it. Um, CC12 bubble, one of the sound channels keeps dying. Maybe it had them so back they just released it. Um, okay, I've not looked at anything to do with that at the moment. The only thing I have done is looked at um, where this game over countdown is and I can see why it is so quick. It's literally four or five seconds and there's nothing to tell you other than the fact it says game over here. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll replace that routine with something that gives you uh, quite a lot longer than that. Maybe maybe ten times that um, and, and put, put a countdown, like a continue warning somewhere on the screen with the countdown. Um, maybe maybe where the game over is here actually Just so you can see it. In fact, it's not even five seconds is it? It's less than that. It's like two or three But what we'll do is we'll just get it to keep repeating that and count down another value at the same time So we'll, we'll set a value to ten and then as that counts down uh, Every time the game over routine would have normally exited We'll make it count down that value by one and display it on the screen wherever we need to display it um, okay, so let's take a look at it with the debugger, so we can see what's going on. Because before we start hacking at this, I wanna I wanna have a look at how this is actually made. So, um, so this screen's all characters. Let me bring up my little cheat sheet as well. I didn't save it, but I have got it on page somewhere. So. Uh, should know this by now. There we go. Control shift X. There we go. So you see this is all characters. This is the character set. Um, we'll be using this later on to do the, the continue. Um, we've got everything we need there. There is no question mark unfortunately. It would have been nice to have a question mark in here for that. Uh, but I'm sure we can do with that. That's fine. with registers um oh, okay this game is freezing we're still fine sometimes saves on hardware uh yeah i guess if the it depends on what the state of the machine is at the time so it could be that there's certain registers being set that you can't restore because they're setting some timers or interrupt um yeah okay so so the main the main screen this this first screen is oops is just a character screen uh, nothing nothing unusual there um, so the main title screen is this one uh, again mostly characters two sprites here um, nothing unusual about this screen is that locked there we go um, yeah there is there does seem to be a split here. Um, 
can see the sprite point as a change and I'm not sure why that is. It doesn't need to be. Um, there's nothing changing on the screen other than other than the sprite point as I go down, so I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, character set at 4000, screen at 5000, so so far fairly straightforward. Yeah, what is that sprite? Is that the is that the end boss or something? It's there as well, but here on this side it just seems to be showing up and bottom of it. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Change one. Looks like I think it might be the yeah, it might be the end boss or something. Why it's being shown here, I don't know. Why they feel the need to switch between the two at this point, wherever it is here. For some reason there's a split here. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's start the game and take a look. So this is where it gets really interesting because um, I know that the game uses, and I think everybody else knows that the game uses um, character sprites for everything. It's one of the main reasons I wanted to look at this actually. Um, that and it's a, it's a sub pick as well. Uh, and my joystick on. Okay, so let's let's fire a couple of bubbles and then give it a pause. Okay, I've got both joysticks turned on. So the first thing I can notice is that these bubbles are blended with the background. So in the same way we're doing in, in our game, these are blended with the background. As you can see, they're not sprites. None of these sprites are, um, are the bubble. Uh, the, the enemies in bubbles are sprites. That's fine. That's to be expected. Um, but the bubbles that are actually being uh, that are actually being ejected, growing as well. They start small and then they grow. And then they are blended with the background, which is... Oh yeah, sorry, let me make that full size. Yeah, so, and you can see as well that they're, they're in various states as well. So this bubble here is taking up quite a few squares. I mean, that's not a small bubble by any means in terms of software sprite manipulation. Um, so let's take a look at the character set at that point. Okay, so we can see it's obviously reserving quite a lot of space here um, for that. Actually, the round one ready is not a sprite either. That's interesting. That's actually uh, that's actually characters as well. Um, what's two sprites? I don't think that's the end boss. Two sprites. It looked like it was about six sprites. I think for the end boss. Yeah, there's. I think when the when the fire bubbles come out and you you fire a green bubble over the top, there's a there's a there's a fight over which one sets the color. I noticed that on the level um, with the two bits at the side and the, lots of fire. It's taking hey, it's quite a while to get the fire in the right place on the right hand side. But quite difficult. Um. Let's have a look. It looks no, it looks like it's an entire. Well, let's work out which sprite is which on here. So we've got a sprite that seems to be. Is that the top? Yeah. So that's the top. It looks like it's taken up four characters across, like so. Um, but only two in the middle, but then two at the bottom as well, three at the bottom. So maybe it's maybe it's one, two, three, one, two, three, and two, three. That would make sense because if the bubble is two by two characters, then it could need up to three by three, which would make sense. So that's this bubble here, I think, or this one. Uh, I think it's this one actually, because there's a little bit of a gap there. Yeah, it's this one here. So we zoom in. Yeah, we can see it is. It's these. It is. Two, three. 
One, two, three. Hmm. And it doesn't make any sense unless it's drawing some rows backwards for some reason. I think the order that it, it's drawing them in, in might depend on which row it's drawing because it looks like it's drawing that row. I oh, know it's not drawing that row backwards though. Hmm, it's unusual. So let's have a look, see if we can figure out how it's actually drawing those because I'm quite interested to know how optimal their, their routine is. Uh, for this. So with our game we're actually pre-calculating uh, the bubbles, uh, well our projectiles in each position and that takes up quite a lot of memory so interesting to see if they do that in here. There does seem to be something around here which looks very suspiciously like um, oh, sorry, this is all the sprites but this looks a bit like it could be character data. In fact look there we go there's some kind of oh that's the E, that's the extend Characters, yeah, there's all the extend bubbles. Doesn't seem to be any pre-calculated stuff, which is interesting. So let's let's take a look at what's going on in this location here. Because as this bubble moves up it'll get redrawn. And once we know where it's being redrawn, um, we can try and break on the code on there. So this is in um, is that column yeah, column Column 12, let's do this one here. Column 12, row 17. So let's bring up the calculator. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive that because the number of bubbles you can fire as well is quite quite a lot. It's uh, an impressive amount. Oh, 17. Okay, so we need column 12 plus. Uh, so 692. And. We're currently at 5400, so we need to add that to this. So it's 56B4. So let's set a breakpoint 56B4. And we want that to be anything greater than or equal to zero. And turn that on. Now we should see it break almost straight away. There we go. Um, okay, so this is the piece of code that's doing the work. Um, it's using indirect indexed addressing in zero page, which is um, a good way good way to do this. I'm guessing 42 is well. Let's have a look. Actually, let's see because there doesn't seem to be any oring going on here as well. So let's go and have a look in zero page. Put a breakpoint um, there and get rid of this one, so we know. We know what's going on. We've got a marker as to where we're going. Let's go and have a look in zero page at 42. That didn't change, did it? There we go. So this is 40, uh, which is memory location. Uh, sorry, screen screen RAM location. So 56B4 is, is this position here that we're looking at. But it's taken the value from 8DB4, so let's... See where that is in memory. Is this? Could this be pre calculated bubbles? It looks like it might be. These definitely look like graphical kind of things. The, the kind of repetitive numbers here as well. Um, so 8db4 would be here. Can't see that as oops. Damn. Yeah, nothing. I mean, this does look suspicious, but it doesn't look very bubble-like. So, um, do you do stuff like this with the freezer with the Amiga too? Um, no, I don't. I would like to do some stuff on the Amiga someday, but um, I'm very. Um, very kind of occupied with on the Commodore at the moment. Um, yeah, it could be the original, the original screen data. I'll tell you what we can do. We can just for now we can fill some area around here. So if we just fill um, fill that RAM with those values and see what that, what effect that has on the game. Um, skip a couple of frames.
Okay, so it's... It's like it's some kind of mask or something, I think. Um, interesting that it's... But the reason it's probably flickering on and off is probably due to double buffering. Um, so if we check in uh, in this uh, location and watch this you here it's probably going to change the screen will probably flick I'm guessing to 5,000 yeah so you can see it flick between the two so that's it double buffering between the two values still doesn't tell us what it's doing there though so yeah it could be saved background Okay, let's let's load it in again for the fresh. Got the memory address stored now. Oops. Press CPU jump. Here we go. Give it a reset. <clears throat> that sprite's really interesting me. Like digging it out and so that code could be the erase part of the soft sprite. Yeah, maybe. Um, I would have thought though they would have had another buffer somewhere. All right, in fact, I'll tell you what we can do. We can let's start the game, pause it, and let's compare um, fire a bubble and compare that like lo location. Actually, I just saw that flickering now. And see this here. This is copying the screen. So. So this is copying buffer one to these two locations. So yeah, I think you're right, Andy. I think that is kind of the original, the original background. <coughs> what are my objectives today? Okay, so what I want to do is uh, I want to look into this this code. I want to see how they're doing it so efficiently. It's incredibly efficient, um, especially considering they're doing nine characters at a time uh, per bubble. That's a hell of a lot to be doing. Um, then I want to um, I want to add that continue thing in so I want to I'll show you the routine in a minute I'll show you what's happening um, um, and basically I just want to add an, an extra kind of length to the I want to make the, the game over sequence ten times longer than it is um, and for each iteration of the original game over sequence it's going to tick down a counter show us show us a continue counter like you would expect in these games we just need to find somewhere to put it on the screen but I, I think we can probably find somewhere over here to do it um, I don't know it might work in the middle of the screen actually we might be able to get away with it uh, depends on what happens when the game restarts so um, I think it would be better in the middle of the screen because then that's where your eyes are focused right that's why you miss it over here by the time you realise it was your last life and it's game over, it's too late. Whereas if it happens here, um, and it's ten times as long, so it lasts like 20 seconds instead of two, um, then you've probably got more of a chance of doing it. I think we, we might just have to clean up, we might have to record what's underneath that text. Um, oh yeah, that's a good point. If it is in the middle, it might affect two player. That's a very good point. You don't want it in the middle in that case, do you? You do want it over here. But either way, I think uh, I think increasing the amount of time that it's there for will definitely help. Um, it's just not there long enough for them. But actually, can you fit the word continue across there? You can just about. Yeah, you can just about fit continue across there. But you could have compt or something like that. Um, okay, so let's. Otherwise, it's all going over. I didn't even notice that. I, was, <laughs> I read it as middle, so that's pretty good. Oh, thanks for the follow, Smooham. I completely missed that. I mustn't have heard my alert for some reason. Welcome to the stream. October 1987. Uh, what was I doing then? I didn't even have a Commodore then, or I think I was just about. I think I was still a Spectrum. Ooh. 
the arcade resolution of this game is 256 by 24, which would explain why they haven't bothered with the sprites over this side, which I mean obviously makes it easier. Um, so that's another thing you can notice here as well. If you look at the the X position here, so. Um, That's no good. Uh, this is well, it's eight characters from that end. This means that's thirty-two times eight is two two five six. It, um, but the sprites never go past this location here, which means they're actually two forty, um, and they will never go probably past this square here, which means two thirty-two. Probably the furthest they can go is here. Um, which makes the border. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Spectrum boy anymore. I do own some Spectrums, but they never get turned on. They just sit on a shelf gathering dust. But I tell a lie, I turned a Spectrum Plus 3 on about 18 months ago just to try the disk drive out. Then immediately turned it off when the game loaded. Oh, is it? I missed the eye. Noticing that. Should be fixed now, I think. Um, okay, so we know this is where it's copying the background, so that's the arrays routine. So actually, let's keep this this in place. Let's delete this one. See if we can find another routine that, that changes those bubbles. So we need to fire a bubble roundabout here somewhere. Um, joystick is on. Being active. They do fight quite a bit, the bubbles, to get through an area, and they don't seem to be triggering that. Let me let me close the debugger down and restart. Sometimes I have an issue with this. Where did you used to have to refresh? I'm sure I've never had to refresh. Oh, well, see, this is what I mean about this. Sometimes it just doesn't reset properly, the debugger. Okay. Remove all eyes. Okay, uh, yeah, am I going to do this in time? Actually, I don't want to complete the level, I want to fire some bubbles. But that's, we're going to have to do another calculation here to get this bubble, so let's have a look. We're at 18 across the... Thank you for... Oh, it's a raid! Thank you, that geek dude, and welcome to everybody that's come along with him. Uh, welcome to the stream. We're currently looking at the software sprite routine for Bubble Bobble, um, which is a very impressive piece of code for 1987, so we're taking a look at how it's been done and to see if there's any kind of sneaky tricks that we can learn from it. Oh, I like your new hypes by the way, Hayes. Very nice. Um, where is... The 18 across... 20 down, so let's put that into the calculator. A bit decimal, it's a bit easier. 18 plus 20 times 40 is 332, so we want 5732. Okay. 5732, more than, more than or equal to zero. So we've got a break at 18840. Um, sorry, 18F0, which was very close. So this was our original code here. Um, that seems. This doesn't seem like it would be changing that location though. So let's just advance it a little bit. But this is definitely changing it. 
not sure why this claims to be changing it. I mean, it's not. Here we get some more. So I think we just need to look at these kind of the 40s because this is where it's being copied into the buffer. Um, so this is increasing the rows. This looks like the code that's actually erasing. I think Andy was right. This is this is just copying the kind of original buffer back in place. So we probably need to look for um, similar commands but with ors nearby them because in order to do this kind of blending of the background and the foreground um, it needs to use an or and that will be done in the char set. So let's actually look through the char set instead. So if we look at the char set and bring the oops this one bring the, the cursor in here you can see it multicolor so uh, which bubble is moving at the moment so let's see if we can find this one which looks like this here so uh, these are rows of 32 so that would be 32 is exactly one page uh, in memory 32 characters so if we're on page one two three four five right at the beginning of page five um, and our chart set is at 4800 so this is in memory at 4d00 if we go and have a look there we should see okay so this is what bubble data looks like when it's merged with the background which kind of makes sense we can see the stripes we can see the green in there as well Yeah, that geek do we're we're taking a look at look at how it's all done. Um, it's a very amazing game for the time, um, and, and in my opinion, one of the best ports of the, the game. Um, probably because I've never completed it. I think I'd be disappointed if I completed it and didn't have the full completion. Apparently, it doesn't have so. Okay, let's see what's right into this address. So. We just come in here, we just change this to 4D100. Keyboard's more than equal to zero. So anytime this memory address is, is written to, because uh, any value that's zero or above is every single value possible. Um, and give that a run. Um, it says it's being written there, but that's definitely not being written there. That's stored in a completely different place. Okay, here we go. So. We've got a couple of memory addresses here, and I see an or here as well. This, I think, this is the interesting bit. So this is loading data from three one zero page, and three one is at four nine hundred. So that's um, in our font. So if we're going to have a look at our font, four nine hundred is this here. So this is actually loading a blank space. <laughs> uh, I do want a happy ending. I was really annoyed when I completed Parasol Stars the other day, and I didn't get, um, didn't get the good ending. It felt, it felt kind of a bit let, a bit of a letdown, really. Okay, so this looks like it's copying blank space, um, but this could just be because at this point. Um, this value hasn't been set properly to a bubble, so let's let's put a breakpoint in there. Pardon me. Oh god, that sprite's bubbly. Uh, let's turn this one off because I think I think we don't need that right now. Why is it stopping at that point? Have we got another breakpoint in there? No. Why is it stopping there? Okay, I'm gonna restart again. This this is a constant problem with this um, this debugger. I keep getting random breaks in different places, and you can see I've got no other breaks. Let me turn the memory one off just in case. Um, but yeah, it's it's now breaking up here for some reason. I don't have a breakpoint on there. So E eight four six. Not really. Also, don't like the way it doesn't remember its size. I have to keep resizing every time.
and to not restart. And I, I, I'm pretty sure this thing's getting worse as it goes on. Um, okay, so let's go and have a look at that memory location again, just to make sure it's the correct one. E eight four six. Yeah. Okay. So this, the reason I'm interested in this is because it's loading a value in. It's anding it with some something else, so it's, it's doing a mask of some kind using and. So I'm guessing um, the values at this location are masks, and then it's oring with another value, which is merging with another value, and then it's storing that in a new location. So I think this is probably original font, um, a mask for the font, uh, the the value at the new location, and storing finally in the the target location. Right. I'm to debug the debugger. Yeah. <coughs> Restart was a constant problem. Oh. When did I complete? Uh, oh no, no, it was probably about three weeks ago now. Um, and annoyingly, I've not completed it on the real hardware yet. I only completed it on. Um, on the GPD, but with no cheats, right? But it's it's easy once you get once you get all all the same items on one level and you get the proper miracle, then you get the door at the end of the level. You go through that and there's a 100 credit coin there, so kind of easy after that. So let's put a breakpoint there. So hopefully that breakpoint won't fire until we fire a bubble and then it will start. On a fire breakpoints. There we go. So now, if we look at thirty-one, yes, okay. So it is reading this uh, this space value, uh, and why is it seven? So it's definitely reading blank space at this point. Not sure why. Um, let's go and have a look at eight two forty, and that's been handed. X is at five. So yeah. So this is masks. So you can tell it's masks because of the kind of shapes that are over here as well and the fact there's a lot of FFs in here so FF is kind of the default I guess um, which turns everything on so it's, it's no mask at all and anything other than FF is a, is a mask through the promo it's going be a this is quite, yeah it's an amazing an amazing accomplishment um, I'm trying to remember what else he did um, I think Hayes was playing one of his other games as well recently I can't remember offhand though Sure, somebody can look that up and post in chat what, what else he's worked on. But I, I do seem to remember um, him, him doing some other kind of quite quite popular games as well. So ah, here we go. Here's the bubbles. So if you look here in the in the, it's kind of hard to tell that they're bubbles, but they definitely are. And you'll see them. They are moving around, and these are the masks. You can see the bubble masks. So there is a bit of pre-calculation. It looks like the horizontal position is being pre-calculated. Um, so that's kind of cool. And you can see the bubble grow as well. So there's like a smaller bubble and the bubble gets bigger. And then the masks and the masks get bigger as well. So that entire mask seems to be from and, and the bubbles itself. So the bubbles start at 8,000 looks like and move all the way up to 8,400 that's one kilobyte that's the same so <laughs> this is this is what's impressive that's the same amount of memory that our little projectile our little single 8x8 pixel projectile takes um, no this is uh, Stephen Ruddy Um, I think he was. Uh, no, Firebird was the publisher, wasn't it? I can't remember what the name of the developing house was. Ah, uh, Bionic Command and Ghouls and Ghosts. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right, Ghouls and Ghosts. That was the other one he did. I kind of like Ghouls and Ghosts. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it's nowhere, it's nowhere near as good as Ghosts and Goblins, but um, it's not, it's not terrible. As far as platformers go. Um, okay. 
So yeah, it, it looks, I mean, it's fairly simple in what it's doing. Um, it's just doing it very efficiently. Uh, we could probably put a little, a little kind of border color change in here to see what's going on. So let's, let's have a look if that's the entry point. I'm guessing it's not because there's something here as well. It could be actually looking at this that the the bubbles are updated alternately, uh, which would make a lot of sense. That's because uh, that's a hell of a lot of characters to update in one go. Let me go to. Oops. So there's this value here. Um, not sure what this is. I think this is ticking through. I oh, know this is going through the mask and the bubble itself. I'd like to see if there is a routine somewhere in here that's being called all the time. Right, so I'm looking for an RTS so we can see a, a, a kind of previous routine ending. Uh, it doesn't look like there is one though, but this looks interesting. E779, so. Okay, that's being called from a few places. Um, I don't think it's going to be here because you look these are all very close together so this looks like data of some kind but this area definitely looks interesting so let's go and have a look there 7bd8 okay so there is a jump into this function um, and then it's jumping straight into the other one so this is a what's called a tail call optimization it's where you don't um, Instead of doing a jump to subroutine and an RTS here, you just jump straight into an, into the next function you get the RTS from that one. Software creations, that's it. Did a really good job when there's a bunch group up at the top. Yeah, it's the only the only downside to this method is the color clash. And I think he did an amazing job of reducing that as well. And I think a lot of that is down to the, the design of the background. So again, we used a, a similar method uh, originally in our game. We've changed it now because our, our sprites don't go over the background anymore. Um, well, they don't go over the foreground. They do go over the background. Um, but it's a good choice of colors. So the I think green is a standard color. So uh, you, in fact, it is. There. You can see it there. So white is the character color. So if we look at if we look at character, uh, not character, sorry, um, color run. Um, you can see, actually, interestingly, it's all 0 and 9, which is red, so so red is the character colour, white is standard, and green is standard. So white and green are standard, and then red is, is the colour that's been applied to this, this level, which makes sense because the bubble is green and white, so, and for that reason, no colour ramp has to be changed at all when they move across. However, what does need to happen... Um, actually, that doesn't make sense because when the bubbles overlap um, with like fire bubbles, you get weird color clash. I wish I had a, should have taken a freeze frame actually of it when Hayes was on the level with the with all the fire in it. Um, but there was definite color clash going on up there with the bubbles. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it looks like red is the color that's being used all over the screen. Player two bubbles are blue. Oh, maybe it's not then. Maybe. Well, let's have a look. Let's see. Let's have a look at a bubble um, in character ROM and see what's actually going on. So, uh, if I start and, and press fire, seven uh, B D four. Okay, let me let me write that down because I want to remember these these addresses. do it here the, the color increase that I'm thinking of but um, I'll worry about that in a minute so I'm gonna f I've turned the breakpoints off I'm gonna fire a bubble and that should fire it for both players I oh, know player two's bubbles are green the great thing with the debugger is it will We'll um, hand set it to play both players at the same time. 
they're both green, not blue. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because that would have been completely believable. But I mean, look at that, look how many of bubbles are on the screen. So let's let's stick a little debug routine in uh, quickly just to see um, see how long it's actually taken to do these bubbles, um, and then I'll take a short break and we'll we'll have a go at putting the continue thing in. So let's go back to that location seven B D four. We've got this jump here. So this is as I say this is called a tail call uh, jump. So we can kind of intercept this by actually replacing with this with a jump to subroutine. Um, and then a, uh, and an RTS. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to actually jump to somewhere else and have that area of code do it instead. So we need to jump to E779. So let me grab my code. A little bit bigger so you guys can see it. I don't have slots, and I probably never will as well. I've written so many slot games, I don't want to ever see a slot game ever again. Don't mind playing other people's. I do. I've been. I do need to spend some time actually working on the bot. Um, Hayes has been very kind to, enough to uh, give me some uh, useful code, which I. Oof. I'd like to get the the auto auto 64 stuff working because uh, if I get that working, we can you know, I could stick a fruit machine on it, and can have that come up instead. You want your slots? You can have fruit machine slots from C64. Uh, okay, so I'm just trying to find a, a space in memory to put some code. Um, can have a look on here. So kind of free. Quite a lot of it being used actually. It doesn't seem to be very much free space, if any. Around here. Okay, this is on the on the RAM, so this is obviously going to change quite uh, quite a lot on the I/O. Don't want to put it there because I don't have to bank things out. You'd rather win some wine. I'd rather have some wine, but um, I've got work tomorrow, so I really can't. Um, ah, here we go. This looks like an interesting block. We've got some blank space here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a safe place to put things, but for now, um, we'll assume it is. I don't see anything else going on here. 7C40. Um, okay, let's let's put something there. So what we'll do? Create a little. This is our our new code. Um, and we need to put something in to replace our original. So our original code is at 7BD4, which is actually very close by, so it's kind of convenient. Um, not that it matters, I mean, you can jump anywhere in memory and it's more than one page where it's going to be a bit slower. So 7BD8, okay. All we need to do is make sure that this piece of code in this location takes up the same number of bytes as the original. So the original is is this. Uh, we're going to change it and we're going to have it instead uh, jump to 7C40 to, to this location here. And then the first thing we're going to do is, is build the end of the function, um, which will be. Now, it's going to jump to this location, but this has probably got an RTS at the end of it. So let's go and have a look, see if we can find the RTS. To say, I think this is a tail call function, so I think somewhere near the end of this there'll be an RTS um, after all this copy stuff. Seeing anything? It looks like it's doing lots of copy. Oh, there's another jump here. It's an indirect jump. Um, okay, I'm not. There is an RTS here, but there's another jump here. I don't think it's that. Let's just try it with a with a jump anyway. <clears throat> with some wine and some fresh pasta. <laughs> oh, I could just eat some pasta now. So what we'll do is we'll 
jump to that routine and then we'll do our own RTS here. Um, hopefully the stack doesn't get bashed in that location. So what this is doing um, is hopefully replacing this with um, our own our own core. So this will now allow us to do whatever we want here. So what we can do is do that there and then that there. So now we should be increasing the border. Thank you for the follow, Charles2535. Welcome to the stream. Having a go at Bubble Bobble and seeing, seeing how we can break it and uh, improve it if necessary. But I think it is necessary. Okay, so I'm going to run this in, in Vice now just so I don't have to mess around with this version. And we're going to see what's going to happen here. Hopefully what we should see is when there's bubbles on the screen. Um, okay, so it's only doing it when the bubbles are actually made for the first time. Uh, but it's actually not, not that much... Not that much in the way of um, master time being used there, it's quite impressive. 156 bytes of stack, yeah, but one <laughs> one thing I've seen a lot of um, developers do with, with 64 is something like this. They'll do, they'll do that, they'll do that, and then they'll jump somewhere. And so they're basically destroying the, the stack pointer, uh, sorry, like that. Um, they destroy the stack pointer. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of um, safety mechanism to save recursive overflows, but a bit scary. Um, that didn't look too bad to me, to be honest. Um, but I'm not, I'm not convinced this is capturing it all because um, it, it seems to only happen once at the very beginning. So I'm going to see if there's another location where that that's happening. Um, so I'm going to delete these ones. I'm going to put our memory location back in here, which was for the hundred. I'm going to give this a quick restart and see what happens. Yeah, when I, when you consider how much how much they they're actually doing, so one bubble is the equivalent of every single projectile we've got in our game. Um, Oh, that's interesting. Only just pause now. Oh, because you need a certain number on the screen, I guess. Okay. Uh, is this the same location? I don't think it is, is it? Oh. Let's see, where were we? E779. This is a bit further along than the other one. But it is doing the and and the or again, uh, which was also happening was it? I don't know, maybe it is the same place. Okay, so let's restart, see if we get... No, it's just the same place. And once... Ah, oh, it looks like the bubbles are being shifted as well. So if we look in, in this mode... Um, fire a couple of bubbles... bubbles are actually being, you'll see here, they're being shifted along the so complete. Thank you for the follow, Fate, Fate, Fate Emmet, Fat Emmet. Well, the Fate Met or, or Fat Emmet. Okay, cool. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I do want to have a look at some of the other stuff in the game. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the continue next. Um, I say I've already kind of figured out where this routine is going on and we can have a play around with this. Um, we can use this block of code here uh, with some adjustments to, to do what we need it to do. Um, there seems to be plenty of memory in that location. Um, I'm going to take a quick five minute break and then when I come back we'll, we'll take a look at the, uh, the, 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 the continue, uh, the countdown. Alright, so be right back guys. Yeah, I absolutely need my cigarette on my one hour breaks. Bad habit, I know. But it has to be done. 
Okay, so we can get rid of this code now. We don't don't need it. We'll um, we'll replace that with something else. This code we'll work on it in a second. So what I want to show you is this routine that I found. We just started again. Seven BCB. Go to that location. Uh, right, okay, so we'll put a breakpoint here and I'll show you what's happening. Oh, it's breaking straight away there, that's interesting. There must be a timer there as well of some kind. This is a timer routine. Hmm. We might need to find another jump location for this. So it was just a quick look, so okay, so I just need to die, so it's fairly easy to stand still. But what seems to be happening is this routine seems to be um some kind of timer. And it seems to be handled by the raster interrupt. I'll show you what it's doing in a minute. I die. Hopefully it'll be now. Got one more life. Right, there we go. So the game over text has appeared here and we've sent to this routine here. Now if I step through this the follow on to it actually it loads this value in zero page, which currently is zero three, and then the very next thing is it does is it compares that value with the value in this location, um, and branches if it's not equal back to here again. It just keeps comparing it um, until it's not equal anymore. Then when it is isn't equal anymore, it returns from this function at this this RTS here. So if I skip through, you'll see it compares the value is still 3. Uh, accumulator is 3, as you can see up here. Um, so this branch will jump back again. And it keeps doing that until the value changes. Um, which... Some, oh right, now we're in the interrupt. So this is in the interrupt at the moment. Uh, let me just jump back to that location again. Uh, B, something like no. Yeah, damn, I can't remember the actual location. Thank you for the follow around, Scott. Welcome to the stream. Seven. Right, B, B was it? B, C, B, okay. E494, okay. E494. I'll put a break on the comparison. And what's happening, I think, in the background is the raster interrupt is deciding whether or not to tick this down based on some internal timer of, of some kind. Um, you can see it's staying the same, it's staying the same, it's staying the same. And then at some point it will change. And the moment it changes, this RTS will get hit. So if I turn this off... There we go. In fact, it's incrementing it. There we go. So it's gone up to four. Now it's different. So at this point now, jump back to this code. Um, and that code will then eventually, in another timer, Ah, there we go. This value here, 0, 100. Let's have a look at that. 92. Uh, so if that becomes... If it's not 0, it jumps here. If it is 0, it goes here. So I think this RTS here is the one that gets fired when this reaches 0. So if we watch that value there that I've highlighted. It's 92 at the moment. We'll see that tick down. And as it ticks down, once it reaches 0, it'll hit this RTS. Um, 
sticking down, still game over, zero, there we go. Now the next thing it will do is it will jump back to wherever this was being called from, which will start the game over, the team, uh, which is this bit here. So this is the actual game over. So what I think we need to do to make this work is we need to create another variable somewhere. There looks to be quite a few places in zero page that we can mess around with here. Um, so we'll use FF because it's, it's right next to zero zero. Um, and what we'll do is we'll change that routine to 7C, no, 74CB, wasn't it? 4CB. Oh. 7BCB. Okay. God, my memory is terrible. Yeah, so this routine is being called over and over again, and then it's returning. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to add some extra code in here instead. Will save states mess it up? Um, they shouldn't do. The save state should be able to save zero page correctly. Um, if they don't, then lots of games would fail because zero page is used quite often for things like lives and continues and things. So. Um, it would be unusual if they did, and also things like sprite multiplexing as well. So if you if it didn't save zero page, then all the sprites would be in the wrong places. So it's unlikely it's going to break it. Um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't have thought so. I'm not sure why um, some save states mess up the sound. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, as, as I say, I think it's to do with registers being set somewhere else and expecting certain values and they're not being recorded. Um, okay, so what we'll do is this 7BCE, we're going to create a piece of code that, that overlaps that. So if we look at that there and we put 7BCE in here. Um, so the original code is this. Increases the value in that location and Actually, we need to do it one step before 7BCB. 7BCB. So jump to subroutine E494. So this is our timer. This is what's timing probably probably one second. Um, I'll see if I can dig out the tweet from Vinny about the sound. Okay, yeah, that would be cool. Um, Vinny does a lot of this sort of stuff. Um, I should probably speak to him more about it. Um, what he does because it could probably help quite a lot with these streams um, It'd be quite cool. I mean, it might be worth getting him on one of these streams one day. I'm sure he'd um, I'm Sure he might want to do that at some point it'd be Good to see it's good to see how he does things as well because he does this Like constantly. I mean 364 is basically him doing this to every game um, in the magazine that week a lot of cheat finding, uh, a lot of kind of sprite um, work, a lot of map work as well. He's been messing around a lot as well with, in fact he's been messing with Bubble Bobble a little bit as well. Um, so it might be worth seeing kind of how he does these things. Okay, so this is the original code. So now if I run this, this will run exactly the same as it did before. But what we want to do instead... Um, is probably at this point here is change this routine to store a new value so what we'll do instead of instead of doing instead of doing this we will jump to our new location here and that will now contain this So again, this is still doing the same thing at the moment, but now what we can do is we can we can add something different in. So if we put the number 10, um, let's do it in hex just because why not? And we store that in zero page at this location. So now what's happening is um, we're, we're storing the value 10 in this location. This is still going to work exactly the same. We need that label. Uh, where is that label here? But now what we can do is, the first thing we can do is decrease the value in that location. And 
and then if it's equal to zero we'll jump to the end we'll make the end here and instead of branching here we'll just jump back to uh, here again we are going to need to store this value as well um, so I'm going to store the original value that's in the accumulator here and every tick that we start we'll store it again in 0 100 uh, after loading it it looks like we're doing a lot of code duplication here but what we're making sure is happening is that every time this this restarts the original value in 0100 is stored back again and now because we're originally storing 10 in this ff location and decreasing it will only exit this loop um, will only exit this loop once that's happened 10 times so it should take 10 times longer now ah that's really good to know that's it I'm gonna save that link because I do like to read these sort of things and I don't have um, a lot of time to kind of find these so I need to have a location to go to. most of what I'm doing I'm, I'm doing because I've kind of just figured it out really um, okay so let's give that a try in vice and let's see how long the game overtakes now it should be a lot longer now if everything's gone correctly I notice that that initial thing was very quick so I need to maybe look at that we might have broken something there to tick down. I don't think this is going to work because that, that initial pause that it was doing before it seems to be really screwed up now. Okay, so now we're in game over. Oh, okay, so we've made it super quick instead. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at this. So at this point here we jump to our new location which is here we store the value that was in the accumulator which should be this 0100 this should be the tick down that's happening um, I think what we need to do is we need to find where that's being called for the game over so let's go and have a look for that okay, it's called from a few places uh, 7 EDF seems interesting because that's close by this location here uh, let's pull in some values loading the value name so let's put a breakpoint on that um, and that okay so it's not that one because this is the one that's happening um, this is what's happening at the beginning of the game I'm gonna restart the game and just make sure that this isn't being called in two places this could be being jumped to from somewhere else so just put the oop, put the break in again. Die. Corrupting the accumulator. Ah, that's a good point. Um, I'll have a look in a second. I think the problem is as well is that we're, we're in a pause routine that's used in multiple places, so we need to find out where it's actually called for the game over. If this isn't called for this location, um, then we know this isn't do with uh, game over this is literally just for the beginning hopefully now okay no we are hitting this okay so let's have a look in the stack and see where this is being called from so the stack point is at FD uh, which is here e, so EA0A 0A okay Seem right. Am I reading that right? FD. Or EA, maybe. Zero, 
guys are a fart. Uh, no, we need to find out where else this is being called from. Uh, let's have a look at A5D7. Oops. Seven B C eight. So there is one here as well. Let's put a breakpoint in there. Let's get rid of our. So this is the breakpoint at seven B C eight, which we're not interested in at the moment. Let's get past that one. This one isn't being called, so it could be this one. All we need to do is find the the routine that calls the pause only on game over and change that. Okay, cool. Thanks, Hayes. That'd be. I'm gonna have a look through that at some point. It's one of the channels when we start in a frozen game. There is nothing you can do about it. It's, it's the way the ARC action replay cartridge is built. It's always been something that is not. I accept this. Ah, there we go. We've hit, actually we've hit a different location. Ah, we've hit the original pause. But it's not that one. Okay, it's fine. I'm just going to keep going until I find the location that actually calls that. Points in the wall and see what happens. Um, e6, F, that one. That one. This is suspicious around this location because I know the lives around here somewhere. Maybe this next location. This looks unlikely, but let put a breakpoint in the mall and we can see what's happening. So it's not this one because this is happening at the beginning. It could be that the they're all um what's that one from BCA. Okay, I need to get rid of that. that they're all being called slightly differently to how I, I, I think they're being called but it's fine can have a look. game continue I don't think it's a pause as much as it's a timer it's a it's a way of um, that's a very good point though actually that something is something is counting down um, and I think the interrupts are controlling everything else. So that's probably why it feels like it feels wrong, but it is I, I'm pretty sure it's using those as as ways to do these. Um, ah, see there you go. This one is only being called on a game over. As I say, it's down near the lives routine, so And actually, if it's if it's two player, what happens in two player? Do you always have the chance to restart at any point? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this code here to to do this at this location instead. So we do it A A three. We're gonna jump to it. Okay, let's just skip all that for now. So the code that this is doing is loading um, 96, jump into that routine. Um, we need to RTS from it though to go back to here so that it continues. Uh, jump to, yeah, so 
because we're calling a jump to subroutine here and, and not here. Do that. That's right. Let's just try that, make sure that's working. By the time it reaches game over, you're going to get sent back to menu. Oh, really? So you you don't even... Uh, do I have to press it? I do, yes. So wait, when is when when can you continue? Is it before the game over appears? Or is it during the game over? Because maybe I'm looking in the wrong place for this. Let's let this character die. I just want to make sure that this is running the same as it was before it should be. Game over appears virtually when you're hit on your last side you need to fall down fire. It's jump in mode, so if one dies he rejoins the game not confirmed. Okay, so this is just a problem because of one player it looks like, so I'm going to try extending that, that game over, we'll, we'll try that first and if, if that doesn't allow us to continue the game after, we'll, we'll, we'll lengthen the time um, and if that doesn't allow us to continue then we'll, we'll think about how else we can do that. Okay, so this is the timer, this is the exit, so this is this is the end. Let's call it game over. Uh, for real, there we go. And this is our timer function. So what we need to do is something similar to what we've done here. Uh, we'll take the value A, we'll store it in FF. This will be our loop here, and in this loop we will decrease this value. Um, if that's equal, zero we'll jump to game over for real and then we'll do this routine and jump back to here again should be enough um, because we're resetting this timer here every time let's give that a try that's a real game over that's the issue okay I think the problem is is that game over is not there for long at all. It's like two or three seconds it's there at the most. I'm hoping now that this should give us about 20 seconds. It should be 10 times longer. And once we know that it is 10 times longer, we can store that value um, in the screen somewhere so we can see a tick, like a countdown for it. Yeah, that I, I kind of get that, I think. Thank you for the follow size of void size of underscore void welcome to the stream We're attempting to add a continue timer into uh, bubble bubble to make it less brutal for for one player standard seems to be a, a tick down of 10 seconds but we're gonna see okay definitely longer does it end that's the problem as long as this does eventually go back to the main screen. That's a lot longer. As long as if you're already in a death and I haven't been holding down the file, you'll get okay. Go back to the start screen. Ah, okay. Okay, cool. So we've extended that game over. So now the next test is can we wait 10 seconds and then press fire to start again? Or is Hayes right in that you have to be holding down fire as you die? Because um, if that's the case, we're going to have to we're going to have to really dig into the code. So should probably just reduce the lives down to one in this, but it's fine. It doesn't take that long to die. Let's 
So when we get game over, I'm going to leave it a couple of seconds. So leave it a little bit. Yep. Okay. So nothing I'm doing now is. So what we need to do then in that case is we, we've managed to lengthen that time and that's fine but now we need to figure out how to restart the game should we get to that point. Um, so we know this is where is where the game over is kind of happening. Uh, we need to look for, is it joystick 1 or joystick 2? What, did you, were you using joystick and port 1 or 2? I don't suppose it matters because I can find we can find both and we can figure out what's going on. Uh, PC00. Zero zero. Let's find something round about that location. 0531 looks suspicious. Ghost port 2, okay. Uh, okay, so this is. It looks like it's doing both players here as well. Um, if. Fire has been pressed, and this is just checking the fire button. Go to 05A6. 05A6. Uh, no, that's. Hang on. If fire isn't being pressed, then go to here. Otherwise, do all this stuff here. So. So, in here, we probably see a jump to our location that we had. anything no this will be the jump to our location jump 052c oh e. here which is just going back to that check again so this is the loop that's actually checking ah and here's the pause as well oh no uh is that a pause e494 i think it is no Four nine four. What's that? I remember that. Reason four nine four. Oh, there is a pause there. Okay. 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 I think I know what's going on here. So it's this bit here is what's doing our our check. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in there. Get rid of. Oh, actually, we don't need to. It's not got the code in here. Still doing the pauses there though as well. It does one pause at the beginning. I think it's that one then. E. Yeah, there there is absolutely nothing in here which will wait for you. You literally have to be holding it as you finish. You're right. You can write a 50 hertz 60 program for all power inches. Um, yeah, it can be done for some games. It depends. Depends how much the raster time's been. Um, the project I'm working on at the moment, actually, I'm trying to um, add NTSC put support to what's currently a PAL only game. So. It's just a matter of kind of looking. A lot of the time, a, a game can quite easily work on NTSC. You just need to shuffle some of the rasters around a little bit, move them. Um, they may have been coded to rely on on lines that exist outside the NTSC screen uh, because you have so much less in the in the pipe bit, the raster line. So, uh, where are we stopped here? O five AD. So at this point here, I think it's too late. I think here is... We've already died at this point. Have a look. So we've got some branches to A6, which is here. Uh, these are related to... Whether the joystick's been pressed or not. Um, there's no other pause before then. That's really, really frustrating. I feel like we could stick a pause in here, maybe. 
If player one dies, it should go to game over, but it should wait before going to the menu screen to allow player to use it credit because player two may continue. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's a universal way of doing the doing that kind of fix. It's very, very different to. Um, yeah, it, it's very different to how uh, depending on the game, basically. So, uh, I just want to have a look here because there was a piece of code up here. B, load accumulate B two comma X. X starts at one, so this is player one. Is this lives or is this continues? This might be continue. No, that's not continues either because we've got nine continues. There doesn't seem to be a check for the continues here. Um, I mean, yeah, let's let's put a little let's put a little check. Um, not equal. Let's just change this value here in O five three four. To see if changing that to zero instead of one zero um, will actually force it force it to continue. Because if that happens, we can start kind of rerouting things, and that's the kind of goal here is to try and figure out where these these things are happening. Um, use all of these now because I think we know where the game over is. Risk pausing the whole game while player one times out. Yeah, point. We started only time by pressing Q. Problem is, I keep starting player two. I should have pressed one then instead of two. Okay. But we can see what happens with two player as well. It might go to a different area in memory. It might be because this is this is only a problem in one player, or if both players die, I imagine. See, it automatically starts me there. It automatically continues then. I don't just make it always continue credits, that's why we know. Yeah, that's why it's doing there. This is this is actually um it's actually just chewing through credits now. So we've changed this location here. Just checking for the fire button being pressed. Um, and interestingly, you look at this routine. So it starts here, and this is this player dead here. I'm pretty sure if that player recovers, mind you, these these characters are going to get at least one of them is going to be dead all the time. Oh no, there we go. So it is being checked all the time. So this routine is happening all the time, uh, but I think it's checking if we're dead. So I think this B2 is probably, are we dead? So let's have a look at that. So let's see what's happening in these locations here. 100E. Zero, zero, e. I reckon this is invulnerability timer. Um, Or it's a state. It's a state counter, I think. So player one is on zero one. Player two is on one zero. Oops. And as player one gets hit, it goes to zero e. I'll only see the issue in player one. Okay. I'm just trying to work out what these values do first. It looks like these will go to zero when you run out of credits, but it dies so quickly. Okay, let me um, let me just restart it because I've not got many credits left. Let's speed it up. Right, 
right, Andy, there is a point. That's what I, th I think this is it. This looks like it's it. Um, but we need it in one player, really, to see the see the effects. I completely forgot I could speed this up. Well, I guess it's kind of cheesy. Okay, so... Should be game over now. Right, okay. Start again. One player this time. Pressing one. Right, there we go. What? Why is it fired on both? What? Oh, I know why. It's... So this is this is the right thing. This is the right area. But what it's doing now is it's automatically, automatically starting for both players. It's the equivalent of both players constantly pressing fire, and it's uh, when it's uh, game over. So I think this is the correct place to do it. I just need to figure out now. Let's put that that thing back because that's definitely what's causing that issue now. Uh, what was it? Three, four, here we go. And now that player shouldn't start automatically. Go. Yeah, alright. So, if fire has been pressed, this is what happens here. If it hasn't been pressed, it goes to this location um, which decreases value so this is flicking between play one and play two so one and zero then when it's done them all it goes to here which exits otherwise it jumps back to the beginning 52c we need to see if there's something which calls this a lot um, so 052a five, oh five, so let's have a look for that There's a few locations. I'm going to guess it's this one around here. There's a decrease Y here. Plus here. And then it jumps to that location. We'll automatically check. Okay, so. Seems to be decrease X, decrease Y, and six. This one here. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself while I try and figure out what this is doing. Minus one ID to be here. Well, I think the the problem is is in two player you've got enough time, um, but in in one player it's like immediately you don't have enough time because there's no second player to keep the round alive. Okay, this is this is where it's been jumped to. So let's have a look what happens at this point. Okay, so it's straight in at that, which is checking for fire being pressed. So, so this is constantly checking if player two is pressing fire. But there seems to be some timer which is stopping it from getting to this point. So something in the game over is not giving you the chance. Okay. Figure out why that might be doing that. Um, I think this this is just a huge floor, isn't it? This is we'll test both the dead and then go back to the menu. Yeah, it's a huge floor because what it's doing jumps to that location. This location is here. This is then checking the players. Um, is it 0528? So this is checking if the players are pressing fire. 
and they're not pressing fire, it jumps to here. So it decreases player value. If that's now negative, goes to 05 AC. This I, I, it feels like this is the game over here. Which if it is, we can kind of get around it by changing this block of code here. So let's let's have a look. Oh, but you see it goes straight to the that routine. This is it's always there. I mean, saying it's the time again. It's not, yeah, a long time before it is. You're right. It is definitely a long time. It's this routine, and it seems to only happen once. And this routine seems to check if both players are dead. Um, and if both players are dead, both active players are dead, um, then it ends. But it seems to be going in there all the time as well. <clears throat> If both players are dead, it would be fun to make when one player goes straight out because player two is always dead. Yes. Agreed. Um, there's only two places that call this. So this is one, 049E, which is this location up here. Uh, here. And 3A1B. So let's, let's put breakpoints in both of them and see what happens. Uh, well, it's not... It's not that one, is it? Because that's so. It's only that one location that actually calls it. So this is what's calling the check. This routine here is what's calling the check, and it's the only place that jumps into this routine. I think I'm going to put. Another, I'm going to keep that breakpoint there in case we don't hit the other one first. Just in case there is somewhere else that's jumping into it. So no, see, it's always it's always doing this and then doing this. So. This isn't necessarily where the game over has happened. Yeah, and yes, it would be simple. <laughs> so this is this is the problem with this assembly because you don't have any of the labels that make up these these things. Mm. Yeah, I agree, Andy. I think that's what's happening. It's going into this routine, and at that point, this routine is saying, "Okay, um, are both players dead?" Or is fire being pressed to introduce it? So this routine is doing two things. First of all, it's checking, do we introduce a new player? Um, and secondly, it's it's checking if both players are dead. Um, and if fire isn't being pressed and both players are dead, then it skips. And that this is this is the fundamental problem. This is what Hayes is saying, isn't it? That that, that routine is doing, doing two things. Um, and, and the problem is, is if you if you aren't doing one and the other one is true, then then it's game over. And because that check is only being done once, it's not allowing some time before that happens. Um, actually, actually, thinking about it. It jumps and it escapes from this routine. So let's see where this this routine is being called from. So when we get to this point, where is the stack at? The stack's at FB. I'm gonna have a look in the stack. I have a plan. <sighs> Completely forget how the ability stack works now. Is it one E or is it E3? No, it's you're at A1E, I think. Let's go and check that out. No, it's not. Oh, wait a minute. Into subroutine 045C. O four five C is here. Yeah. which is at the end of this. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is the entry point for this check. So uh, what I want to know is what happens when it comes out of this function. 
here. Is it doing any comparison here? It's not. Okay, it's jumping into this function and it's returning at this point. Load the accumulator, load x with 8, increase x, what's in 0, 8, 4, 0, 4, 8. I'm trying to find the exact game over. <clears throat> Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm trying to find where the game over is because that isn't actually the game over. That's just the check to see if it's game over. Um, but it doesn't seem to actually do anything in that check that that sets any flags or anything. So where, where was the code again? O five eight C here. Okay. So the only thing that happens is when it's finished it jumps to this location. If fire is being pressed, then it does some other stuff in the middle. Um, or maybe it's B2. Store accumulated B2. Yes, so it loads 0F into B2. So it's these B2 locations that I was looking at before. So what I want to try and do is find out where uh, where is that gone? Zero A. Find out where that's being checked and find the game over. Once you find the game over, then we can kind of, we can say, there'll be a check that says, is it game over yet? And it, if it says yes, it will jump to the game over. Um, and at that point it's too late. But what we can do is we can direct that code and put our, our count there. Uh, Trying to see if I can find where that might be. So there's a lot of subroutine jump in here. Um, and then when it's finished, it comes to this point. This is just loading the value in 08. Not sure what that is. I don't think it's important at the moment. We can check it out again in a minute. Um, although it does seem to be storing OA5D. That seems to be code. Yeah, look, it's, it's storing some values in, in code here as well. So there's some self mod stuff going on here. Might need to figure out what. Ah! Aha! So, if B2 and B3 is the state of the players, so in this case, player 1 is active, player 2 is not, this is actually combining those two values. So now we have 0 odd with 1, which gives us 1. If it's equal to 0, it goes to 0, A99. This is our game over here. Absolutely certain of that now. Let me turn all the other things off. And now we're in the game over. Right, I think I've got it now. So I'm going to replace this code here. So what this code is doing is getting the state of both players. Uh, and this is at 0, A64, okay. This is getting the state of player 1, which is in B2. It's or in it with the state of player... Uh, sorry, player 1 and player 2. If that's equal to 0, then it's jump into this end location here at 0A99. Um, if it's not equal to 0, then it will carry on doing what it needs to do. So what we need to do is replace this chunk of code here with something that will jump to here and return um, with either 0 or 1. 0 means it will quit the game. Um, 1 means it will it will continue with the loop again. Um, and that loop will include pressing fire to begin again. So <laughs> let's think about this. So this is this is two two bytes, two bytes, three bytes. That gives us seven bytes to mess around with this. Okay. So if we at this point, if we jump to our location here, that's three. Uh, Sorry, that's not three, that's two. So that gives us another three bytes to do something with. So what we can do here is branch v call your A99 and stick a knot in there like that. And now that's replacing that code there. 
Yeah, thank you, Akinfin. <laughs> I did realise eventually. Uh, so now we can mess around in here. But the first thing we need to do is we need to know if player one um, or player two um, are, are both dead. So if they are dead, so uh, do continue. Otherwise, we can just return, and that will that will continue this exactly as it was before. So now what we can do um, just let's think about this. So if they both are dead, we need to set a value such as this, and we need to do this loop several times. So let's say we set a value of FF in here. Um, think about this. Okay, okay, I've got it right. So we're going to set a value of ten in one in one place, and we're going to set a countdown timer. Let's let's put FF in for now. Um, but we only want to do this once, and the only time we're going to do this is if this value is already zero. So if it's not zero, we'll just skip ahead. If it isn't zero, then we'll set the timers up. And at this point, we'll decrease this one. When it's uh, not zero, we'll skip over the next piece. At this point, we'll decrease this. And we will check to see if this hits zero. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, call cool. game over for real. Otherwise, we get to this point, and at this point, we just load the accumulator with one. Doesn't really matter what we load it with because all this is doing is checking if it's non zero. Um, and RTS. Otherwise, we load it with zero and RTS. Right, okay. I think that should do it. Let's give that a try. Hopefully, this is going to work. Hi Pixels at Long Gaming, it is a challenge stream, hi. I think this is going to make the continue go on forever now. Oh, sorry I missed that. Can you also or it with a flag and then do that flag after the timer? Yeah, that's a good good idea actually. Um, Alright, let's let's see if this works, we can, we can tidy it up a little bit. I think that's probably a good idea. I like them emotes. They're really cool. Where do you get them from. Hopefully now we should still see game over and things are still moving. But it's taken a long time and I'm pretty sure if I press space now. Yes, there we go. Right. So that was the right place. Die faster by trying to play the game. You can also speed it up. Um, the question is, how long is this going to go on for now? I think this is one frame at a time. So this is five seconds um, per tick, or, or tick of our, our bigger one, um, and then. It'd be 10 times that, so it's going to be a 50, 50 seconds. Ah, oh, yeah. But if I continue, ah, oh, the hurry up stops. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what happens if you you sit there and wait for the hurry up and then just leave it for 50 seconds. Yeah, so I think, I think what's happening... <laughs> Damn it, Rasters. I think what's happening is... Uh, this is being called now once per frame. Um, so do we need to or it with a flag? We could or it with... Because we could skip this whole whole section. 
it doesn't really matter. This is this is kind of fine. But is it counting at 50 frames? I think so, yeah. Can you make Atari 2006 when games were on a 64? I don't mean convert, seeing as you build carts. Can you write a simple map or Atari? No, the architect while they both were on the 6502, the graphics architecture is very, very different. Um, uh, it would be it would be kind of <laughs> impossible to do. Is it counting at 50 frames or is it counting every four? That's a good point actually. Let's how can we check that? Um, well, what we can do is we can reduce this down to one and see if it takes five seconds or twenty. So. Yeah, so Antonio Savona, who did the um, Atari conversions, used the code as a kind of jumping off point, but most of it was re rewritten because it is so different. The, the architecture is so incredibly different compared to the C64. Um, one, three, five. Uh, oh, and it had okay. It wasn't every frame; it was like every couple of frames. <clears throat> I think it was about three, maybe three or four frames. Uh, what made you think it was every fourth frame, Andy? I'm interested. That was a pretty spot on guess. So. random number fair enough yeah it's it, I think you're right I think it is about three or four frames um, so what we can do is if we if we set our bigger timer to start at 17 let's try that first and set this one at a so we're gonna try and make it 10 seconds um, and all we do here is if uh, if we decrease this one then the first thing we do is we put that that timer value in again I'll make these constants actually in a second just so it always starts back at that. Uh, do the uh, we'll call it ticks per frame. Like that, seventeen. Actually, should be seventeen like that. So. Change this one as well to uh, continue time, continue length, I guess. That was a spot on guess. I wasn't even thinking about how long that, that was taking, so that's pretty good. I'm impressed. Just stay where it was. Okay, I'm gonna just check this is roughly 10 seconds. Um, and then, actually, can I get a stopwatch on my phone? And then once it is, I'm gonna go for a, a quick smoke, and then we will look at part two where uh, we will actually add some some graphical indication of that that thing happening thank you for the follow dorolic 77 welcome to the stream okay so i've got a stopwatch as soon as game over happens i'm not going to speed it up because i i want to press this at the same time Okay, we've got game over. That was about 10 seconds. Yeah, so I think it's every three frames. Looking at that. 
Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go for a quick smoke, and when I come back, we will um, enhance this a little bit. I'll have a look, actually, how much room we've got in memory just before I do that. So, where was it? 7C40. Um, just to see if we can fit in some continued text in the middle of the screen or something. Oops. This is where we're putting our code. Oh yeah, we've got loads. We've got like 500, 600 bytes or so. so. But it was working, it is working. Oh, thank you, Dorelix7. I like it too. It's serious. I'm very, very proud of it. I'm slowly working on the second one. Taking my time. Gonna get it right. Okay, guys. I'm gonna take a quick five minutes. Probably less than that. Um, and then when I come back, we'll stick a continue timer on. Um, and then maybe if we've got time, which I think we should have, have a look at um, doing some other stuff with it. Right back, guys. Right. Let's do this. So, um, where is our initialization? So this is where we initialize. So at this point here, we can add the continue text in. So let's start by just figuring out where on the screen we're gonna put them. Um, so we know there's two buffers. It's probably gonna alternate between the two. Um, Five four and five zero, so we need to store in both of these locations. We want it to be kind of in the middle somewhere, I guess. Um, this bit is thirty two across. The word continue is eight characters, so we need to be twelve characters in around about here. Um, so we'll do do twelve eleven. So that's eleven rows. Um, plus 12 characters across, so that's 1C4. So we need to store at 51C4. That'll become a. We should probably store X because it's not being used anywhere else, so we'll transfer X to the accumulator, we'll push it onto the stack, and we'll grab it back at the end. So, no, there is a there is a char set. So, if I go to the right page, there we go. There's a full character set here as well. It, unfortunately, it's kind of 32 above what we are, but it's fine. We can we can either store the numbers uh, individual, or we can just add. I'm pretty sure it won't take that many cycles. Just add 30, 32 to each value. So, um, we also need to store it at. Five, uh, five, five, no, yeah, five, five, C, four, X. Okay, cool. So now we can just, X from zero. we'll do it backwards actually. Makes sense. Uh, call it continue text. So, X, and while it's still positive, go back to here like so. There we go. Uh, we can just put the continue text down here. Uh, new, like so. Text thing. Uh, oh, thank you for the sub, Dorelic77. Very much appreciated. Oh, it's a, it's a gift sub. Thank you, Hayes. Welcome to the stream. Again, you have access to uh, Shallon Shimmer and Shallon Dock. No? Here we go. Uh, so, the other thing I need to do. This carry bit is not going to change. So if I just clear it here um, and then add that there. Hopefully now we should see the word continue. So what I want to do is see if when when continues over the word continue stays there. So there's two two points of concern here. One, 
does the continue stay there or is the, is the screen redrawn? I suspect it's going to stay there because it isn't scrolling or anything. Thank you for the bit, Starlick. Appreciated. All goes towards drinks, coffee, all sorts. On a Saturday, I drink lots of wine while I drink. With mixed results. Um, the other concern is that the game is still... The, the, the enemies are still moving around in the background, so depending on how their collision works, if they use the off-screen buffer, um, or if they use the on-screen stuff, they may... Um, they may end up kind of doing weird things where the text is, so we shall see. Okay, so this isn't the correct values, and we've got a jam. Okay, why have we got a jam? Just check, are we pulling that value correctly? Oh, uh, yeah, that is because instead of doing this, I should be doing... Here. So, uh, the other thing is it's not using the correct font here, so why is it not using the correct font? Um, do I need to set my... Let's, let's just try using the bytes. Uh, so this would be two... Okay, so... Two, three, two, F. To E, E would be E four, I think. Oh, we'll soon see. Uh, it's nine. This seems to be the font for the title screen, actually, at this point. One Italian coffee for you and one for Dot Cosmos. Thank you very much, Dorilic, and thank you again for the bits. Don't waste my bits on coffee, it's for wine or more wine. Oh, there's plenty of wine. <laughs> plenty of wine. Okay, so I think we need to look at this character set, because I don't think it's the character set. It is the character set that's been used in the game. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Let's let's give that a try to see what happens. I don't know why it's getting the wrong colours. Um the wrong text, I mean. Maybe we need to set the colours here as well. Let's try setting uh, that would be D nine C four comma X. Going backwards from the start. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, he's, he's definitely got a gun next time, that's for sure. Got a gun and a sword next time. Hey, there we go. Okay, so if we press continue. Okay, so the word continue does stay there, so we need to remove that continue um, if space is pressed, uh, if fire is pressed. So that means what we need to do uh, before the continue is drawn, uh, we need to be storing the original. Uh, original. Oh. And we'll, for now, we'll just fill that with um, eight bytes of zero, and we need the original color as well. And so, before we do this, we will. We only need to get it from one buff. We don't need it from both. Um, if there's a bubble there, it's gonna get. Am 
actually what is going to happen if there's a ball there. Maybe this should be the off-screen buffer instead. What if later the word continue appears on level where well it will it will cut out uh, a section. We're replacing the characters there, so it should it should always cut out a black section um, with the word continue in it. Okay, so now we're storing that value, but now what we need to do um, is in our routine that does the, um, the, the check for this, the fire button being pressed, um, we need to go and check to see if the original character, so what we'll do is we'll check the original character um, to see if they're non-zero. Um, uh, we will check to see if the countdown timer is running, if the countdown timer is running, then we can we can replace it. Okay, so this was at 0531 or something like that. Run about this location. Okay, so th it's this bit here that's doing the return, the returning the player back into the game. We should see something which stores in B2. Wherever that is, is where we're going to add it. Uh, B2, I don't see it anywhere, where is it? Oh, there we go, oh, it's almost straight away. So this section here will replace. Um, so we'll have another routine here, we'll call it um, store, uh, store level or something, that should be fine. Um, and then we need to write a piece of code up here place that so 053c uh, so that code currently is f store accumulator b2 comma x we're going to replace that so that's four bytes so we're going to replace that with a knot and then we're going to jump to restore level store level We'll do this this bit here uh, but the first thing it's going to do before it does any of that first of all it's going to uh, store the uh, uh, store the X register so we can mess around with the X register because we're going to need it for indexing and then at the end throw it back like so use the same routine but add a flag to jump to the new code and it drives an off code just store We could also actually get it to, hang on, I'm trying to figure out what you mean there. Same routine, add a flag to jump. So you mean use, you mean use this routine here? Oh, I know continues on screen because um, this value non-zero. If this value is zero, then continue isn't on screen. So, for instance, um, see that's that's basically doing this, the same thing. Their lives. I'm not entirely sure what you mean there. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it this way. If you want to explain a bit more what you mean, because it might save us some room. Um, that there, I can get rid of that.
<laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what you mean there, Andy. I'm, I'm sure it would definitely work. But I, it's so hard describing ASM over text. It's really difficult. But yeah, I think probably along the same lines. It's just I'm going to use that counter as a deck. So let's give that a quick try just to make sure that works. And hopefully now. The, the word continue should be removed. Um, so my other concern now is that... Let me think. Yeah, my, my concern now is that this is um, using one of the front buffers rather than the back buffer. I think it should probably be using the back buffer because if there is a bubble there Okay, it didn't jump into that routine. Why did it not jump into that routine? Stick a break in there, make sure it is actually jumping to restore level. Actually, did I jump to restore level? Yeah, jump to the routine with restore level. Restore level, blah blah blah. Oh, I didn't do an RTS here, that would probably help. I'm surprised that didn't. I was trying to say, it was original live chat. Check if lives are non non. Uh. Hey, I think I get you. I'll check. Either. PP. <laughs> I do need a PP. I've had a PP. <laughs> I could stop. <laughs> okay, Andy. No worries. I think I get where you're coming from. I, I just needed a bit more clarity on it. Pause there. I think it's because I had alt held down. Not restoring though when I go and it's not breaking either, so I, I don't. Oh, I didn't put a break in, that's why. Oh, that should be. That should be that, that's why. That's why, okay. I need that break now because this will be only be zero if we're not continue. if we are continue will will not be zero and then it will it'll cost you a lot he likes his max so it'll be a Mac laptop credit to you though for what trying to follow along on a phone but more patience than I've got Thank you for the follow, keeping track of this act. <laughs> nice name, I like it. Welcome to the stream. Okay, we're not getting that continue disappear, so let's just make sure we're actually going into that routine. Um, let's start by putting a break. 053C, that's here. This is where fire has been pressed at this point. Um, that should be here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay, I see. Oh, very fancy. I was looking at uh, 4K HDR monitors today and I came across the HP Omen uh, X65, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I, I want it. I, I mean, I can't afford it, but I want it. So it's three and a half thousand pounds, but it's a 65 inch 4K G Sync monitor. Kind of crazy. Okay, so we're, we're definitely hitting that point. Um, for some reason, it's not storing the original values back where it should be storing them. These locations.
let's go and have a look in memory. It's not going to be that easy to see this, unfortunately. Where is the memory? Can just have a quick look in memory. Uh, so we've got. I'll continue text around here. There it is. Or oh, we do have some original values here. Um, it's like they're not being called, so I'm going to stick another break in. Um, I'm going to check a value a little bit further along. We're going to check. Continue length FE. Yes. Okay. Remember that load if we accumulate, but it shouldn't really matter at that point. I'm going to put a breakpoint in there. That happens. We're getting a Lenovo. Not like that, it's a Mac fan. We're going to like a Lenovo. Anybody like Lenovo? From what I remember, I mean, it's been a long time since it's Lenovo laptop. From what I remember, they're not very good. Maybe they've improved now. Let's get to here. Okay. Uh, okay, we it's like we're not actually hitting that that chunk of code. Like it's not getting to here. Um why is it not getting that's interesting. Full level. Go and have a look at what's at that location. 053C Oh, it's not actually putting this code in for some reason. Ah, I know why that's not putting in. So, what's happening here is that piece of code is actually being copied from low memory here. Uh, it's being copied from um, IO RAM at the beginning. So because this is below 0900, I actually need to put D in front of it. This is just going to copy it into higher level uh, higher memory um, at the beginning but once it once the game runs it will copy it into the correct location Is that a flag I thought that was came from boring the two life can then in the new code okay. Oh, so you always, because we always go into that piece of code anyway. Oh yes, I see what you're saying. Yep, I get that. Oh, I'll do that in a second. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And then then we don't have to have that extra that extra check in there. Good. Although it's gonna do, I'd have to have another check to say that it's been done, because otherwise it's gonna happen every frame so it might um, okay well if this doesn't work I'll, I'll try it that way but I have a feeling this might work now that's okay cool but yeah I get get you completely now but what Andy was saying was to have um, instead of having this piece of code um, we still call this routine like normal uh, but then in here once the continue starts, we set a flag, and in this case, when we do the or, we return, we return the result of that flag as well. Um, and then, if that flag is set and the other ones are on zero, then we can do this piece of code um, to return it. But this is doing this. Oh no! So <laughs> Uh, can you change the message to press one? <laughs> no, I can't. That, that's already there. That's already, press one or two to play. Continue. What I am going to do though, uh, I'm going to add another value on the end of here. Uh, actually, I'm going to do it two values on the end of here. And that can stay the same. And get rid of that break now. Then. At this point, I'm going to uh, 
uh, so this would be plus eight and store that at can't even be bothered calculating this in my head so I'm just going to cheat and I'm going to do plus 28 so down one row and plus four I wonder if you can guess what I'm doing here you can guess what it is yet Probably shouldn't do that, seeing as he's uh, not a very nice character anymore. Well, I guess he never was a nice character, but. Yeah, very bad. I hate typing on it. I absolutely hate it. When people message me on the phone, it's, it's just annoying. <laughs> oh, I wish I wish I could believe that only, but unfortunately I don't. Okay, so this location we're now gonna put uh reverse is it? This is gonna gonna happen once. So we need to do it in this location here. Uh Came over for real is here. Bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the value in FE, which is already in the accumulator at this point, and we're going to store it um, at this location. I'm going to load the accumulator with zero one here. Store it at those locations. And then we're going to load the accumulator with zero here. Store at those locations. <laughs> oh dear. <coughs> what I find disturbing there is you don't even have to mention a second name for Jimmy, and we all know who you're on about. Okay, this isn't ticking down like I wanted to. It's one space over too fast. Okay, so also it just paused for some reason. Oh. Okay. So let's move it back to character. Make those four, make those three, three, four. Also need to store those values, the original values there as well. So actually I'm gonna do this separately here. Char plus eight, original char plus nine, um, three and four. <laughs> oh dear. I worry about you, Andy. I worry about you a lot. Uh, right, okay. That looks like a, a lot of shit going on there, but basically what I'm doing is I'm recording the, the two spaces underneath and I'm going to put a little countdown timer in there. Um, which I am going to leave that separate because otherwise it looks a bit of a... And, and then likewise I'm restoring those original stars and colours to those locations. Uh, so with the countdown, as long as this is counting down and it hasn't reached zero, then I can actually, actually no, this should only happen once up here. 
So there we go. Um, I should be able to take the value in Fe, which is going to be our value, which is ticking down from uh, n. And if we look at our font, we've got zero to nine, so we just need to decrease that by one actually. Uh, let's see what happens. It's probably going to start with a funny character, but let's just see if that's working. Countdown. My northern accent. <laughs> I say a lot of things in the screen. There we go. There's a bit of a long pause at the end, but I'm not too bothered about that. But what I'm going to do is at this point here, um, I'm going to change this to X actually, and then I'm going to decrease it and store that in there. Um, you could even at this point do the clear. So if if we're at zero at this point, um, this bit here, then we could res restore. But that makes more sense. No, no, it doesn't because it's not it's not on a game over, is it? It's only on a Let's try again. Can you take the average between the pause and the last tick and add one second to it? Wrong. Um, I can probably make it so, I think, I know what, I know what I can do, I'll do it in a minute, should look, should look fine I think, let's just rush this through, <clears throat> okay, uh, that was a bit too quick, I forgot to unpause it. Basically, if I start the timer at 9, um, and then in here, where we do this branch of equal, I'm not going to do that there. Um, I'm not going to do the decrease there. Uh, but what I will do here is... Thank you for the follow, Ureg. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. So there we go. let's try that out. Uh, huh. Just need to remember to turn the warp off just before I die for the last time. Hey, right. what's into the bar? Says that I'm told. <laughs> okay, it's not printing anything straight away. And fix that in a second. That looks better. Better. Uh, okay, why is it not printing anything straight away? So should be immediately. Yep. Continued. Sets it up. Pause the X register, then it should immediately start printing continue on the screen. Um, for some reason it's not. Uh, not zero, go to countdown. If it is zero, go to here. Oh, it's because. Oh no, that should be right. Okay, so that's a continue. Draws the original characters, countdown, draws, picker, I should be right, I don't know why that's, why there's a gap, there seems to be a gap, so. The 
something that continue happens, it doesn't doesn't do the nine for some reason. The gap between it actually showing it. It shows the continue. That's because it gets drawn here. Um, oh, wait a minute. Because... Because it's doing this first. Okay, so what I should do... Okay, so to initialize... I'm going to keep that at 10, but I'm going to keep this at 1. That should fix it. Can you implement the screen that shows how far you got in the game? Screen that shows that? Realize that. Yeah, because I think what it's doing now, Andy, is it's doing the same game over pause at the end. So we need to get rid of that game over pause. Um, which is fine. That's have to change. So the original, original gap at the end happening. Still happening. I didn't realise there was even even that screen in the game. I haven't seen it. I feel like that needs to be down one row as well, it's too close. The ladder screen is made. Does it exist on the 64? Or is it is it just an arcade thing? Oh, I'm just gonna change this to this to me down one. Ah, uh, okay. In that case, no. <laughs> it already existed, and you wanted me to put it like on the continue screen. That would be one thing, but to actually kind of make a whole, whole new thing, um, in what maybe about an hour, probably not going to happen. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to go and find that um, original pause that does happen. So there was a pause. There was it now. This one here. We did have a game over section, didn't we? Um, we'll have a look. So the game over was at 0864. So let's go and have a look at 0864. If it's equal to zero, go to 0899, increment 37, jump to this location, it's this bit here, 0A3, okay. I think all I need to do is change that value uh, to 17, which is the final second that we need. Um, That's pretty good. And for once, we've not actually added cheats into the game, we've just improved something. I was thinking we could add cheats, but we don't want to add them there. I like the fact that we've just got to work in, work in continue. We'll try it again in a minute with uh, two players uh, to see what happens if, if two players um, play and to make sure that one player doesn't set the continue off. It needs both. But it seems to be working. The, the enemies walk through that. I wonder what would happen. I wonder what would happen on a different level. Let's get to a second level and see if we can get that continue thing to make a gap in the scenery. Um, 
And the other thing I want to try is with uh, uh, the bubbles as well. So to somehow die while the bubble. Oh, I can't believe I died there. That's so pathetic. Oh. Okay. Hopefully the level, oh, I think that's the same gap actually. Let's see. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Oh, 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 there's a bug. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So, what on earth is going on there? I press continue. Right, not the clear. Yeah, it's weird though because the game is continuing. There's no hurry. Okay, so we've got a couple of issues we need to look at here. First one is why that, that isn't being uh, restored properly, so let's have a look at the restore. Okay, that's correct locations, correct locations. Um, correct locations for both of those as well should be restoring things correctly um, but for some reason they're not restoring into the game properly which is like this it's this bit here that should be being triggered and it's not um, a minute I broke something here let's think It's not zero. Here, otherwise we do our carrot down ticker thing, then we jump to here. X is being used there. I think that's the problem here. Okay. So we need to change this back to accumulator. Because we're bashing X. So I think there's something relying on X at that point. The problem. Uh, I need two digits a bit quick. Okay, let's start by getting to the second level. I think that's probably the safest bet. That's where we saw the problem. God oh, damn it. How did I die there? Oh, you. Okay, I might die on the first level at this this rate. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, now I want to die, so I, I'm just going to leave it at the, the normal um, speed. See what happens. I think the problem we had with the X register. So we were we were using the X register as one of the kind of values that was being set um, to restore the data, but then we were returning from the function without restoring the original version of X. Okay. Now oh, it breaks here, it does something weird at that point. It doesn't want to return back to the game again at this point. So the question is, is is that 01 the right thing to be returning here? This is probably in incorrect. Uh, is that what actually gets... No, so countdown happens. 
then we come into this restore. Restore does a load of stuff using X in the accumulator, and it puts everything back and puts zero ever. It could be this that's wrong. So let's go and have a look. Um, I've actually crashed at this point, so we can just have a look at what should have been in this location. Um, oh no, we can't. We need to go on this one. <clears throat> so this is the piece of code. Where is it gone? Where's the joystick? Uh, look here. Uh, o A A. No O. A six four, no O five three C. There we go. So it could be this value that gets changed for some reason. Um, I need to have a look at that. What's going on here? Start the game on here. Put it down a bit. Probably going to start two players because I have both joysticks enabled on. Uh, where is that breakpoint? Enable that breakpoint. There's no breakpoint. What are you doing? Breakpoint's coming from. Yeah, so the, the change I made there was uh, in this function, um, we were using X to set these. Um, we weren't restoring it. So it's been restored in this section here. Um, it's been used, then restored, uh, but we weren't restoring it here. But there was no need to use X here anymore, so I replaced that. Breaking the code. Well, in this one. It would show up in here if there was a break. Um, let's go and have a look at that location. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and start the game again without doing this bit. So I'm just going to remove piece of code so I just want to rule out that it's that that's doing it so I'm going to get rid of this bit see what happens when I when I run that second level yeah what is the end address that's a good point have a look yeah. I'm not showing in my build window For some reason, I'm not seeing an output in my build. Yeah, there we go. 07 D16. No, it shouldn't be. We can always relocate this to uh, on the IO RAM as well if we need. There's room. Okay, so I've just disabled the restore code, so the, the text might remain, but we will see if the game actually hangs or not. So I need to complete this level without dying. Embarrassing. Yeah. Okay, now at this point I can die. Get a continue message there, and I restart. Okay, it doesn't crash this time. But I want to see if the screen is in the same location. Um, okay, so it's something to do with that restore code. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's something about calling this this function causes a problem, um, but only on that level. 
which makes me wonder if it is to do with this this piece of code here um, I mean maybe we can move it somewhere else if we have a look at the code at that location 053c and we just find a different different place to do it um, and find the end of this there is a jump here at the end but I, I'm not entirely sure that is the right place because um, it looks like there's some branches as well that could, so there's a branch here that could definitely skip over it um, Let's have a look. We want to avoid any loops. We want to avoid anything that could potentially be being changed. I mean, we could even change this bit here. Let's try that actually. Oh no, because this is. No, see, this is happening twice. I don't want it to happen twice. I just want it to happen if fire has been pressed. 045A. This is restoring the lives, I think. So this is giving the player lives, maybe. 045, let's go and have a look at that. 304. Uh, not sure actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the code a little bit just to avoid because I'm not sure that that OF is the right thing, um, and I I want to avoid it breaking. So I'm just gonna move the code to here instead. And the original code was four, and that stores at. 045a comma x right okay now that is five bytes this time so let's do that this time at the end instead of doing this do this ah oh, i wish i could just start level two die see if that is actually restored correctly um, have to continue press continue no it breaks at that point so it's it's as if something in memory at this point is causing a problem I think I think Andy might be right here um, assemble C C 7C40. So this is our piece of code. Oops. Back up. Up. Quite hard for you guys to see that, so I'll I'll just kind of quickly scan through it, just make sure there's nothing breaking in here. Uh, I'll continue text. Uh, okay. Store level seems to be fine. Oh, it does go weird actually. It's 7D100 onwards, it goes weird. So we do need to reduce this on. So this gets to. Um, this point here, I believe. Uh, yeah, it gets to this point and then breaks. So this is too much code. This little tiny section is too much code. So, in that case, what I'm going to do... I need to find somewhere else to move this. That's all it is. So it's, a, it's a code clash. Um, 
<sighs> okay, so let's look in the debug. Let's see if we can find a bigger block of text. We need about 256 bytes, roughly. <coughs> Excuse me. And while there does appear to be that much here, it seems like this is also being used by something else in memory. We do have the area under IO RAM, but we're also changing um, color RAM. So we need to be careful if we do it there. We may have to create some extra routines to do that. I'm just going to have a scan through to see if I can find any other area uh, that looks kind of empty. Bear in mind, we just need. We need 256 bytes, we need one page of memory. Looks to be relatively blank. Uh, not seeing anything that looks quite full. We may have just got lucky with that, that area that it was only being used, not being used very much on the level, so. Okay, this, oh no. That looks like. I'm not sure, but that's. Again, area on the IO RAM, so it's not really that useful because we can't copy color RAM from that location. We can do everything else, but we can't do the color RAM stuff. But if we have to, then we can we can make the change there to do it. So not seeing anything, any place that that's and some kind of areas around here. Okay, there's. A little bit here um, looks kind of blank. 4C100. That looks blank all the way up to 4E100. Okay, let's try that. All we have to do here is just change this. That's fine, we shouldn't need to do anything else. We use labels everywhere, so. Uh, you create a page and then sing it yeah I mean if if this doesn't work what I can do is I can use the higher area of IO RAM and then basically whenever we do these uh, color things we'll, we'll, we'll bunch them all together into a single routine and stick it in a smaller area of memory somewhere um, stuff under IO RAM is fine until you need to write to IO RAM so But we can bank it in um, out as we need to. So, right, I'm gonna quickly do this, and I'm gonna have a quick cigar. Oh shit! I should not have put that on. Oh, oh, interesting. It's crashed already. I've got the monitor. So this is our code. Hasn't crashed or anything, but I wonder if it's using that location. Maybe it's trying to use that location or something. Let me run that again without the warp on. I did have warp on, so... Oh, the initial title page. That's a good point, because you don't... Do you go back to that at any point? I don't think you do, do you? Oh, no, it's crashing again. Okay, so that's not a good place for it. Okay, so yeah, there's that. Uh, let's have a look where that is at. Can I do this? Let's reset this one. In fact, I'm going to go for a quick cigarette, and then when I come back, we'll, we'll have a look. We literally need 256 bytes. There's got to be somewhere. Um... Right back. Uh, where's my buttons? Where's my friggin' buttons gone? There they are. Right. Right back, guys. Yeah, I was thinking something similar actually. Um, there's also this as well. We could relocate this. This is 30 bytes. Let's just put it back to 7C40. This time, find 30 bytes in memory. Um, just reset, haven't I? Oh, there we go. 
there's all this area here as well which seems to not have anything in it but Rust it. Um, page down on this thing. You can yeah, you can. All right. We need thirty bytes to move. Oh yeah, char set. That's a good point. And yeah, let's have a look at the char set. It's this here. Yes. Good idea, good idea. But is this going to get redrawn every time? I wonder if this is ever used. But this is four... Four... Eight hundred, so four F hundred. Let's, let's have a quick hunt through memory to see if anything tries to print to that area. No, something is something is drawn in there at some point and in the row before. So the char set's probably not a good place. Unless depends how long this is actually. How big is the Y? Decrease Y, decrease Y, no. The Y being set. Right here we go. What that is though, so sprite data, yeah. So sprite data will be five. No, oh, this is in the low bank, isn't it? So it's this area here. So this is the end of sprite data, but it looks like it's already got coding here. Seven e hundred. There's a lot there, isn't there? It looks like something gets written into this location as well. Let's have a look. Ah, yeah, see, stuff gets written into the sprites as well. And this is the bit that's causing us problems. So we were right in here. Um, all our code was going in here, but then something writes to the sprites here, which is this routine. And that writes to G plus. But we might be able to relocate some. This seven, I oh know, seventy, eighty. And there's more code here as well. Okay. Boss right there again. It's not a lot that we need to move. This location as well. Um, four e eighty. There's a few places that look like they're doing stuff with that. Uh, yeah, again, this is the well, this font data isn't character set. <laughs> right, the boss sprite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be quite funny when you get to the boss sprite and it's just a jumbled mess attacking you. What would be really clever is, is if you could write code in a way that it actually looked like something. Not seeing any gaps as well. It really does fill most of the memory, this. Uh, this looks interesting, but I think that's probably being used. It looks like mass data of some kind. There, oh, it's table data. Yeah, it's table data. We've got uh, screen rows here or something little gap there but this is now in we're now in the stack so that's not a safe place to put stuff um, it looks like they put some stuff in the stack down at the bottom of it 
there's the high end of zero page as well, but I'm not sure there's enough bites there to do what we need. Um, I'm intrigued as to if that's if this is code, then I think this area might be safe. But let's go and have a look at two one a two. Is indeed code. So at this point here, some code being run. But they're never expecting the stack to get down this far. So I think we can relocate some of the data to this location. But let's try just moving these and see if that gives us enough room. Uh, this will have to be put into uh, IO RAM for it to be copied correctly. Um, and it's going to need this. What this does is even though we're relocating it, uh, even though we're putting it in this location, we're saying it's eventually going to be relocated to here. So these labels should reference this location, not that location. Store it to SID registers. <clears throat> So that gives us 28 characters less, 28 bytes less. And we were looking at round about, round about here, wasn't it, that it was breaking. But that might actually be enough. Let's, um, let's give that a compile and then, and then immediately go and have a look at that memory. In fact, we can see it in here. Let me see. Yes, this could just about be enough. Okay. <laughs> it is, it's an unusual way of doing it. Okay, so I need to complete this level. Check that everything's working. Leave, I died again on that. And then if it works on this level, I'm going to try it with, uh, I'll, I'll try continuing on to the, the next level. And then I will bring in a second player. <laughs> okay, so something is being cleared in that, that area. But it's working, uh, but I'll continue, it's, it's being blanked out. So we might need to relocate continue to somewhere else. So we need 8 bytes. We were at FB, weren't we? So, uh, 8 bytes. Okay, we can, we can find 8 bytes, that's no problem. Need a row of zeros anywhere. I don't really care where. Word continue already exists, does it? On the title screen. Ah, okay, so we just need to find that. Uh, so it's C, uh, O is to E, no, to F, N is 3, 4. N, 3, 4, no. F, 2, E, no. Let's go and have a look at this. Uh, yes, okay, let's check that. Uh, 3F, do it with this just in case it does something weird. N, N, so 0E. 
Switch on tin. So one, four. No. Uh, okay, so let's, let's have a look at these locations. Eight zero six four. BF. E. Kong. No, they're they're the bubbles, aren't they? So it's not those. I think one B one is also going to be bubbles. B zero eight five. That's. Well, I said it's like our updates or something. No, it's not there. It's not there. I don't know why it's not there, but um, try again with the. Uh... See what we can do. We can find out where it's being copied. Just do a soft reset. Start the game. Turn the breakpoint off. Not on that screen. You find it first, then it's super easy. No, there is no continue on there. No, continue. Where is Commodore? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just going to continue looking. Uh, I'm go actually I'm going to try just sticking it here in F zero. But uh, you watch the zero page will be cleared as well. In fact, the fact that it's the fact that it's um, zeroed out like this makes me think it is going to be it's going to be like that. <coughs> I'm determined to get this working. This screen is never... Oh, wait a minute. No, no, it's right pointers. <laughs> yeah, because that, that, won't, that won't break. There is actually a few places where this could go. It's just eight bytes is all we need, so um, I can die at any point here, so... Okay, so that's no good, but I think, I think, let's see if, um, oops, these are sprite pointers, these are spaces, I wonder if these spaces actually get cleared or not, so I'm going to just put value in there, how oh, they do get cleared. God damn you. I don't need to clear this area, it's not on screen, how dare you. Can you find creations in code? Uh, probably. You mean pick out word character by character? Ah, oh, Umbrella on level one. Ah, oh, missed it. Oh. 
problem is, is because we're using that's that sprites, isn't it? Because we're using almost as much code as we can fit in that gap before it gets overwritten. There isn't really anywhere else we can any more code that we can put over the top. Oh, actually, that's a good point. What we could do instead is just find a word on the intro screen and just replace it. Need a word that's on the intro screen that's not anywhere else. Um, licensed by Firebird. Or Commodore Conversion. Yeah, replace Commodore with continue. I agree, I think that's probably the one. Quite funny as well. Okay, so Commodore will be 2-3-2-O is 2-F, M is 2-D, 2-D, go. Oh, do you know what though? It's just the screen it starts with. It gets overwritten. <laughs> it's just the screen it boots up with. Damn. Uh, okay, so that's no good. So the, all the text on this screen just gets overwritten straight away. That's why you never see it again. So there's this one here. Again, where's that being pulled from? B0. Okay, let's see where it's. Let's see if we can find out where that's been drawn from. Might have to put a breakpoint in, I think. St stick a breakpoint. <sighs> okay. Oops. is because it's clearing it, so I don't care about that one. Again in a second. I'm 05 on one line instead. Seem like it's four hundred percent. So this is just clear in the screen. So this one isn't. So it looks like it is actually grabbing it from somewhere. Let's advance it on a bit. But O eight D seven. How did that not find that? Okay, um, 491 doesn't do anything. E0A. Store there, rubber, store there, when is it safe? Otherwise, subtract 20, store at this location and this location. So, this is self modifying code. Um, and at this point, spring up this. It is actually beginning to draw that now. question is how does it get to here where does it get that accumulated from because it looks like it's getting in from there
this point the accumulator is 23 x is 22 so that would be 2a is that one two carry clear no the carry is set so it wouldn't have jumped so it's this is why it's got here subtract 20 so that would be or three <laughs> but what we're seeing oh wait a minute not OC OA OC OC which is this one uh, okay so read I'm uh, um, anyway, just a poem. Yeah, it, it might, but I kind of want to get this in there now. <laughs> Adds 50 to this number. Would be 52 it in this location. This is just setting the address. B four six four. It's gotta be something that there, there we go. Or six happy. There we wanna have E four three D. This would be a loop to E four three D somewhere. So it's, it's, this is the routine that's repeating E430 is where it's jumping back to, which is here, 0D, there we go, F0EE, -E. okay. Location again. Oops. F zero. Wait, that can't be right because that would imply. looking like I might have to reduce it. I think that as Step says, sticking the word time and we'll just about fit. We've got five bytes left. Um, gets to here, loads this bag, compares it to 10. It's more than 10 to here. It's just going to jump straight to here. F or 6F is where our print takes place. At this point, of 1F. End of the point. I, I think F0EE is where it is. But in here. Sure, this is terribly boring for you guys. Subtracts 20, so if we look for uh, 4, 3, 4F, 4D, 4D, F107, it's here. There we go, this is Commodore. <coughs> so if we change this to F107, is Commodore, uh, it's 9 isn't it, so uh, 
Oh man. <clears throat> wasn't this one, because this is just immediately overwritten. This is now wrong because this is... Okay. Don't want to subtract 20 though. Do we just accept some garbage here? Garbage there means correct Commodore in the text. <laughs> this boom right okay what I am gonna do I'm gonna see how many bytes I need to just subtract that literally just this one place isn't it and new text and I do I just set the carry bit here. Track twenty. Why they've stuck? Oh, they're doing it in ASCII, aren't they? This is the ASCII values. Guessing the the compilers that they used back then, ASCII for X field, so they had to do that. Probably quicker. I didn't actually look at the title screen then. <laughs> what did I do wrong there? Hang on. I added the wrong numbers, didn't I? Oops. Sneakily just hit it in there. I mean, what we could do, if, if I had more time and I could be bothered, um, is change that intro completely, save some space, um, get rid of some of the text in there. But this seems to be working, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it to see what happens now. I'm hoping when one player dies, it doesn't trigger the continue. So I can continue, that's good. Now I just want to make sure that if both players die, we get the continue. And this time I'm going to use player 2 to continue to see what happens. There we go. Day two back in the game. Awesome. Set the credits in the bottom right. Yep. I feel like we should write some uh, no. Make sure that when this that the game over still happens correctly. Anyone have been using the suggestions room tonight? By the way, I've not seen any text. In it. I don't know if that's just because like, something's broken on there, or if it's that nobody's typed in there. Let the continue die down. Did. Okay. Why that's not. Go 
fresh or something. Cool. I'm gonna add separate credit counts to player one and player two. I'm sure with enough time we could, um, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> at this point. Oh, you do have you do have the summary here. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's all working. I'm gonna I'm gonna load player one up. Um, I'm just gonna try and get to level three just to make sure. Um, Cool. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I mean, it's uh, not a massive feature, but it's a nice thing to have. Um, and, you know, we had it working quite early on, but to actually add proper graphics around it is is nice. Not to just have a blank kind of continue, but to have a proper continue. It's kind of cool. Question is, can he do it in 10 credits? Let's accelerate to death here. Uh, okay, there is one fix I'd like to do, which is use the back buffer for the con broken. Try and get to the next. Oops, get to the next screen. I mean, we could get around this by kind of moving the continue to somewhere else. Um, I kind of like having it there. Oh shit! Then. But we know that there's some back buffer stuff going on anyway, so we can we can probably just use the back buffer to, um, which mean that the bubbles work correctly. Couple of static. Uh, is it there? Because the bubbles go up there. Because the bad guy. I think it's. I, I probably can't last long enough. Yeah, let's just try and avoid things for. A, a minute or two. Uh, he looks like he's going to appear. Thank you for the follows, Ed the Arm Monster. Welcome to the stream. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, it's the yeah, it's the bubbles when the bubbles go past. The weird things. Also, this doesn't seem to be seemed a lot higher than it should have been at that point. I think that zero page register that we not good enough. Seems to be getting reset. Let's just go and have a look at that. Okay, yeah, some stuff seems to be happening around there, but we now know we've got a few locations that we can use at the end of memory. So instead of using zero page now, um, I'm going to change these to. Um, Thank you for the host. Appreciated. Bit plain. <laughs> there was a second bit plain. Well, there's a double buffer, I guess. Uh, okay, timer plus one. Oh, actually, no. This is going to be <laughs> shit. This is going to increase increase this as well. Oh shit. Let's have a look at zero page while the game is running. Let's see if there's any area that's kind of not being used. 
determined to get this working, you know. There's some values around here. Let me rest in. Why is that breaking? Oh, there we go. Let's uh, delete that. Speed. No, that value was red then, so we don't want that. We want any. We just need values that aren't being written to at any point. So this is looking promising. This is our continue timer, so let's just continue. Notice how loads of things got written then, so that's that's a problem. So it might be better moving it down to F0. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> I'm going to set the label some aliases up. Um, <coughs> put the message in top or bottom border. I'm doing this first because the the problem is is that timer is is causing us issues, so um, I'm low is going to be this one. Any instance of FF is going to get changed. Right. The other locations for that. And timer high of F. Probably do this with search mid. Ah, no. <clears throat> Do it to the top right of the scores and stuff. That value used for the boss. <laughs> Shit, yeah, that's a good point. Well, we'll let Hayes find out. Yeah, so there is... Um... Actually, is this screen exactly 25 high? Is it... Oh, damn it, press... Uh, and to answer a question, ZDR Monster, we're, we're hacking in a continue timer because there's a bit of a bug in uh, one player mode um, where it's it's almost impossible to, to continue. So we're just having a go at kind of adding that in ourselves. Uh, which we've got mostly working, we're just trying to iron out a couple of bugs. Uh, Good night, Pixels at dawn. Thank you for joining the stream. Ah, there's this bit here, isn't there? Put it there. Let's, let's uh, pause. Uh, be this one. No, this one. There we go. Oh, see. Yeah, we do get room. On it. So let's just move everything to this location. That saves us. I mean, we'll still do the clear, but it means that it's not going to get corrupted by anything. Um, if our locations are all right. We should be fine. Yeah, I think this is a, probably a good location. This is row zero, 32 across, so... Oh my god. I've got to go and change it in places. So this is 5020. I could probably make this a variable as well, but I'm just being lazy to be honest, and um, that should be D8, not... <clears throat> That'd be 28, because we don't want it to go too down. Do that, you don't need to save the bat buffer. That's a very good point, just blank it. Um, which will save us some room as well, which means we can probably move the timer values up. All right, let's do that. Good thinking. Uh, so don't need to store that. Store that. Do need to do that. Don't need to do any of that storing at all. That's not five five, that should be five four. 
You are on fire tonight. Well done, Andy. We have to do some code together at some point. I like your um, like your uh, eye for detail. It's good. But I guess we are with the um, game, aren't we? Um, okay, so all I need to do here is uh, load twenty. Store it here. Here. Ah, may as well just do it on the next row as well. Uh, don't care about the colour, so it's fine. Don't care about any of this code now. It's fine. We also don't need this piece at all. Um, means we can probably stick this in the right place. We can use this timer down here. Um, see if we can actually fit this into the right location there. So I'll do that. I don't need to do that. So timer. Timer plus one. I think we've probably got enough room now. Right, let's have a look. Damn, wish we'd have done this from the beginning there. Yeah, loads of room. That's actually fitted all in perfectly without overwriting anything. <laughs> We've still got Commodore, which is good. Um, hopefully now it can make a little bit more sense. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, it looks off-center because actually they've they've organized it around seven characters wide. Um, I'm I'm fine with that though. To be honest, I'm not gonna do much. <laughs> Which is bad. <that? laughs> oh god, Harry Potter references. They mean very little to me, unfortunately. That looks like it's fine. Let's just do that again, just to make sure. And then we'll do a quick play on to level two. And I think I'm going to call it a night. Because that looks fine there. I mean, I wish it was. I might even get rid of that zero there. It might look better. Can anyone think of a seven letter word that means continue? Or an odd numbered. Odd, odd numbered. Odd numbered length word. Seven or less. That would look a lot better there. In the meantime, while you guys try and think of that, let the time have run out for the little boss. What do you mean the? You mean the? Uh... Carry on. <laughs> oh, retry. There you go. Right, yeah. The little ghost thing, yeah, all right, I'm going to do that. I like retry though, that'll fit nice and neatly up there actually. Get good. <laughs> oh shit. I think it should probably be alright because we're, we're using all contained, um, self contained memory now. We're not using any of the zero page anymore. I'll try and last that long, but I'm really struggling to avoid these. Bits. Did we actually see the ghost appear last time? I don't think we did, did we? Oh, 
Oh, he was just about to appear. I saw him appear and then disappear. Okay, I think that's fine. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna do retry. I know it's boring, but sorry guys. It's, uh, I think it's probably about the best we can. We can I'm gonna leave that as eight, just because. Why not? Um, I need to move it across two in these locations. Oh. One of these is a zero. Which is this one. I need to get rid of that one. I need that. Yeah, don't need that one. Don't need that. Anymore. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not even going to bother um, changing the length here. I'm just going to drag some bits out. Uh, so, or retry. So, R is 80. Five, two, four, five, five, four, five, five, twenty five, so that's <coughs> five, nine, um, three, four, zero. We need another. Yeah, seven letters would be perfect, but I can't think of anything better than retry that's seven letters. If there was a question mark, it'd be fine. It could be six letters in a question mark. Um, Memory-wise, yeah, that's absolutely perfect. We're sat in an area that doesn't seem touched. Um, I'm just going to double check actually that there is nothing that's touching that by just doing some searches. Um, so let's first of all, let's just check directly at the location. Nothing. Let's check from that location. That location. Yeah, there's nothing. Fine. <clears throat> I think retry is fine. No quit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, you know what? While we're at it, I'm going to change my name. I'm going to put my name on the title screen. Where were we looking? And then I think I'm going to call it a night after that. Oh, no, actually. I'm going to change software to Shalab. Space S proceed. Ooh, ooh, 
might get changed in a second. I like proceed. It's not retry. As much as I like retry, it is a bit predictable. Wanna work out the ASCII values for me? I'll work out the ASCII values for my name. ASCII, it's ASCII values. Weirdly. I think it's because the old compilers probably had them like that for some Seven letter words. Advance. Yeah, proceeds the best one out of them, isn't it? Survive. <laughs> or prolong. Jern. But a jern would seem like you're pausing. Prolong the agony. <laughs> uh, do you know what though, guys? It's getting quite late, so I'm, I think I'm going to leave it here. Actually, I'm, uh, I'll give this a quick test just to make sure I've got my name in there, and I will commit this um, as soon as I'm done. It is going to need um, if you want to run this on real hardware. Oh, oh, shall I'm wrong. If you want to run this on real hardware, it's going to need to be uh, XMized, uh, but it's a fairly simple process. Um, yeah, Shine Creations, like it. Um, but, uh, but it will run in an emulator as it stands, um, but you are going to need to XMize it to run hardware. Um, in fact, I might do that as well before I commit the XMIZE version. So uh, there'll be this folder. Uh, I'm going to commit this this entire project like this. In the bin folder, there'll be a crack, but in the root here, there'll be a packed. The packed version will be the XMIZE one that you work on real hardware. Space out between version and buy. Oh, let's have a look, see if we can find it in the. Yeah, uh, yes I can, F11B, he's done that I'm not gonna deny that so quick it's a little bit off the spacing now but that's I'm not gonna mess around with that probably more complicated than Oh, where's that gone wrong? Oh, because I need to put four zero in there. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that easy unless... Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be that easy. Oh, unless...
Unless that's its location. Try something. Seeds working correctly, I am going to call it a night. I will pack this up, I will leave the packed version in the folder. Oh, hang on, I missed the proceed. Did it just tick down too quickly? I wasn't watching. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Um, Alright, let's find someone to raid then. I've got any suggestions for raids? <laughs> yeah, no, no, you were, you got it right. I can find someone. Oh, why did my screen go off then? <laughs> 